ProShore is started by setting up a fully braced tower as seen on the right. This creates a stable base from which to hang joists and ledgers. A ledger is now being hung by connecting to the back post and swinging up to the front post. Once the ledger is in place, which spaces the posts, the previously hung wood joist is swung up and connected to stabilize the setup. The workmen repeat the procedure starting with the wood joists which they hang from the drop heads at the top of the post. The third man is pre-setting the post shores to length and staging the equipment out ahead. Cross braces are placed over the jet locks on the post shores to further stabilize the setup. More joists are hung in place and the procedure is repeated. The second course is started by presetting the ledgers out ahead. The posts are brought up and connected to the drop head and then tilted up in place. The ledger and post are stabilized by connecting a joist to the ledger. More ledgers are hung out ahead by each man. After they hang the ledgers, they return to the start and tilt up the posts as a team. One man controls the post and ledger while the second man on a ladder connects the wood joist to the ledger for stability. The team moves sideways and repeats the procedure. tilting up the post, hanging a ledger. A typical condition at the slab edge of a building requires a cantilevered beam to provide a deck area for the slab edge form and for a walkway beyond the slab. The cantilevered beams require a safety clip to prevent the cantilevered beam from tipping over. After the clip is in place, a wood joist is again put in place to stabilize the system. The post shores are attached to the ledger by using a plastic positioning spud. The positioning spud can fit anywhere along the ledger. Once the grid work and posts are set, all of the intermediate joists are hung from the ledgers and are ready to set in place. The system is graded using a laser and the screw collar on the posts allow for fine grading the system. This is the overall picture of the setup. This is Kanapali Ocean Resort on Maui, which we started from scratch at 8.15 in the morning. It is now 9.15, one hour later, and we have set over 1,600 square feet of equipment. You can see the same erection procedure. Hang a ledger, tilt up a post, and stabilize with a wood joist. One man is following behind and hanging the intermediate wood joist from the ledgers at the approximate spacing required. It is now two and a half hours later and we have set over 3,000 square feet of equipment with most of the intermediate joists also set in place. After setting the main grid work, the intermediate joists are set in place using a scissor lift as the floor is 10 foot high and cannot be reached from the floor. The man is climbing up in the scissor lift to start setting the joists. It is now three hours after the start and we have set approximately 4,000 square feet of equipment using the same procedure. Hang a ledger, tilt up a post, stabilize with a joist.
We are now starting to deck over. This sequence shows the most efficient method for setting the intermediate joists. One man on a lift using a story pole to position the joists can keep up with the two-man crew setting the posts and ledgers ahead. This technique of hanging the joists once they are on the ledgers eliminates having one man handing the joists up from the ground or having a man climbing up and down which wastes a lot of time. This view is six hours later and we have set nearly 5,000 square feet of equipment. This is the Marriott on Kauai. You can see the joists hanging in place and also notice the storage carts with casters used to move the shoring material throughout the job. All of the equipment is shipped in these storage carts as well. This overhead view shows the versatility of placing ledgers and joists in two different directions to meet concrete geometry. This job is at McKenna Beach in Maui. We started setting the equipment at 7.30 in the morning. Two hours and 15 minutes later, we had set approximately 2,500 square feet of equipment. This shows conventional shoring and bracing as compared to the Pro Shore, which is space that you can easily walk through. Conventional shoring and bracing, you can hardly see through it, much less walk through it. This is Starwood Hotel in San Diego which has 14 foot 6 high floors and we are still using single leg posts instead of stacking shoring frames. Floor offsets can be handled by inserting screw jacks in the bottom of the posts which keep all of the bracing in the same plane and stabilizes the system. We can also handle drop beams. This is a 4 foot wide by 24 inch deep beam using Pro Shore and beyond you can see a 6 foot deep beam at the swimming pool area. This is a very clean and simple system and very versatile. ProShore equipment is staged by craning the storage carts into a landing area. This is a good time to install the casters on the carts. Slab and beam construction is simple due to the bracing feature of the system. The flat slab area utilizes simple posts and the beam bottoms are formed using posts and bracing which develops a stable shoring frame. The ProShore system can also be used off of a graded base and transitioned onto poured slabs. Most single post systems do not handle beam and slab transitions as they cannot be braced. The ProShore system is the only shoring system you need on a job to handle all of the conditions, even two foot thick slabs. Exterior dropped spandrel beams and the overhang walkway can be handled by pinning in double channel aluminum saddles which will cantilever over past the slab edge and edge of the building. This provides a stable work area outside of the building and pins into the standard pro shore posts. Continuous aluminum joists are used for the beam soffits and walkways and slide past one another to meet varying column and beam spacing. The system is stripped by first lowering the wedge ledger supports, which drops the aluminum ledgers and LVL joists. The next step is removing the secondary LVL joists, which are handed down and stacked in the rolling carts. This continues until all of the secondary joists are removed. Each 6 foot by 8 foot bay has intermediate joists and then a joist that is underneath the plywood joint. The plywood joint has nails holding the plywood in place and must be pried down. The joists only weigh 20 pounds each, so one man can easily handle all of these units. That's the last joist and now the workman is removing the aluminum ledger. This ledger weighs 48 pounds and again can be easily handled by one man. He is now moving to the next bay and will continue the process, first by removing the intermediate joists, handing them down, stacking them in the carts, then he'll back up and remove the aluminum joists which frees up the plywood. Once the aluminum ledger is removed, the posts remain in place as undisturbed reshores and trap most of the plywood. 
plywood that is not supported by a post is taken down first and then the rest of the plywood is removed later. You can see some of the plywood that is trapped by the post and it merely hangs down. It's best to have a two-man crew on the joists and ledgers and a one-man crew with a lift removing the plywood and re-snugging the post. As you can see, the lift is raised to trap the plywood against the concrete. The post is removed. Then the lift is lowered four or five inches, which allows the plywood to be pried down and drop onto the top of the lift. The plywood's pried down, lands on the lift, then the workman lowers the lift, removes the plywood, and goes on to the next bay. 70% of all the shoring equipment is removed and moved ahead, only leaving the undisturbed original posts in place as reshoring. There's no need to bring in additional reshores, which creates extra labor and material costs. Here the workman is re-snugging a post on an adjacent piece of plywood. He'll then lower the lift, pry the plywood down, and then stack the plywood for reuse in a later part of the job.